But that and more is what we'll be discussing today. But also, Parliament officially starts work today. The 11th Parliament will start officially work today. And one on uh, the most business on the agenda will be swearing in of the uh, Speaker, or rather choosing the Speaker, and that will be presided over by the Honorable Chief Justice, that is Alfonso Owini Dolo. Now, far from that, I also have two colleagues in the studio, that is Robert and Priscilla, but uh, my brother. <laughs> Chidabo, Chidabo, how are you? Good morning. Uh, good morning to you, Felix. Good morning, everybody watching this show. And thank you so much for making us a TV of your choice. And also pledge that we will ensure we give you all the information that you need to know as you go about <coughs> the day. The weekend was a very busy one, we must say. I saw, uh, when the president was swearing in, he said, politics is done, it's now time to work. But yesterday I saw how Ugandans are so much interested in what is going to finally be, or who will finally be the speaker of the 11th parliament. Uh, all uh, social media handles, every minute someone was posting something regarding what was happening. But also for our brothers in Congo there, all is not well. After a volcano that just erupted, I think that was in 2002. Now at it again, and we saw people trying to Look for a safer heaven, nature had spoken. But of course, the lady, Priscilla Naroga, is with us, away from Brother's Day. Good morning, sister. Uh -huh. I need to look out for Sister's Day, too. Mm -hmm. Good morning to Uganda. Good morning to you, my dear two wonderful, amazing brothers. Uh, I'm, I'm definitely going to be celebrating Brother's Day today because of Felix and Robert, who have been awesome brothers. But I'm pretty sure you two also have a brother, a cousin, someone that is close to your heart. Well, they have let you know in advance, so please plan uh, something special uh, for them if you can. My name is Priscilla Naloga and welcome to yet a brand new week. The final week if we can call it for May. Now of course the act, the, lots of activities <coughs> happened over the course of the weekend as has been mentioned but as we get a head start of the week one of the things I'm expecting from the 11th parliament personally is for them to actually sit down and set a detailed list of what they intend to do just within this first year. There's a lot of business that was left pending by the 10th parliament and they must continue and bring to a climax some of those dialogues, conversations and decisions that have to be made that can trickle down to better citizenship and governance. And then I would be expecting them to actually come out with a priority list and do business as usual after elections of the speaker and deputy speaker today. But that's a journey you can actually catch up and follow us with here on our social media platforms on Twitter at UBC TV Uganda. You'll definitely catch the updates as and when they come in live as the voting procedure takes uh, precedence over today and you can follow live events on our YouTube channel which is UBC Television Uganda and uh, we do have a poll question that is running on our Twitter. Now share your expectations of the speaker in the 11th parliament. Hashtag UBC GMU. Do share with us your expectations of the speaker come the 11th parliament. Voting is going to be done today and whoever takes on speakership has a role to play in how matters of uh, governance are going to be conducted in parliament. Uh. Well, of course, gladly. Still about that, uh, quite much more has been trending. Last week, Robert and uh, Robert did mention about the volcano that did erupt. Mm -hmm. I didn't even imagine there were still active volcanoes, by the way. Nyaringongo, that is in a uh, stamp part of Democratic Republic there is of Congo. everything mm -hmm. new, everything there be in Congo, mm -hmm. I can tell you. Everything but it had, is in, in 2002, it, we, they had such a similar experience. So it's just... That's just been a occurrence of nature speaking. So let me trickle your mind a little bit. Did you know that there's a relationship between volcanoes in Congo and gold that they have in Congo? Well, Molen is going to be letting you know the relationship between nature and climate as well as resources, natural resources. There's actually a very serious relationship between those two. So cut her at 7.45 here in Good Morning Uganda as she'll be letting us know about those details. And interesting to note, I had a conversation with someone in Rwanda at the border Githeni and he was telling me that their reaction, the reaction they were getting is the lack of oxygen in the area. So there was a lot of coughing because people were not really getting 
in the desired oxygen. They could see the smoke from where they live and the atmosphere, the air really had just been disorganized. And then later on, they started experiencing earthquakes. And so I would want to know from Molen if on the border to Congo, we had the same experience uh, from our you know, brothers and sisters in that area. Yeah, because that is just a few kilometers from uh, that is uh, Rwanda's uh, Rubavu town. Mm -hmm. So when they experience that, that is something uh, that really effects spread. But I just like, and I can't wait for the connection between volcanoes and gold. So should we have Natural more? Natural resources. <laughs> should, have more <laughs> should we have more gold or volcanoes? You know, it is very, uh, if you're watching those clips, how people were running for yeah, their lives yeah. and how the lava is flowing even on the tarmac, almost heading towards the airport and all that destruction. You'd say, oh, really, nature can speak. Well, our prayers are with the brothers and sisters mm. in the Congan side, Goma most especially, and uh, we trust that God will see you through this trying time, especially economically. Well, just a quick one before we get into our local stories, and I just meant to ask uh, the both of you, and I'll start with Robert. What is the one thing you would change about yourself if you had a chance? What is the one thing I would change? You would change about yourself. Physically? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Proportionally, <laughs> height, carry, oh, I don't know. <laughs> 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 you know, my height. Your, Your height? My height. Uh, you, you, so know, you, know, you, you know, you know, you know, you know how you tell like a girl and you know she can't say I love you too. Like, I love you. Mm. <laughs> she was like, but also, my, uh, my <laughs> <laughs> and actually, I think the eleventh Parliament should ensure that, as the tenth uh, Parliament ensured that the older older persons are represented. Mm. I think even uh, should get a slot I saw for the people in diaspora also craving to be represented. <laughs> so I'm very sure, come mm. uh, the next Parliament, short men. But you're covered. Yeah, we are ma marginalized. But, you're, but, but, but your constituency is represented. Yeah. Huh? So how Th this is not for disabilities. Because for, no, 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 no. We, are, we don't fall under disability. Yes, you do. No, 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 no. <laughs> Have you seen little people? We do not fall under Priscilla, what is that word? Disabilities. <laughs> you Big don't get that. that. <laughs> <laughs> we just need our constituency to better express our uh, issues. Mm. Hmm? Mm. See, look at how we are being bashed on social media. Mm. Anyway. Tags, tags and all that. Let, so, let me just uh, ask. And, and I'll be the suitable member of parliament for that. <laughs> Inshallah. Mm. So, Priscilla. Yes. Is there anything that if you had opportunity, you'd be like, I think I would want to change this. Well, um, in high school, I had a list of the, what you're asking me about. Mm -hmm. I wanted to change my nose physically, yeah, and uh, the shape of my legs. Then, over time, I realized that it's just a matter of esteem. God did not bless me with that. He gave me by mistake. He was much aware mm -hmm. of it. So I decided to embrace it, and now I love it. Hmm. Yeah. If I uh, was plastic it, surgery, if, 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 if black, deep, 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 deep. And you see, people who go for plastic surgery have Michael not Jackson. have not accepted that it is who they are. Mm. Even if you go for plastic surgery, it's not going to erase the photos that we have of you. Formally. Actually, even, even even far from the photos, I, yeah. I've come to learn over time, and also it has taken me to grow up, mm. both spiritually and of course uh, physically, mm. to understand that everyone has a special way they were meant to be. And every time you want to alter that, you, you cannot confirm that even the people you're doing it for will appreciate that. You yeah, get it? Yeah, yeah. Let's imagine, Jarrah, you don't like your height. Let, even if you are tall, you don't know if people would, you know, no one would be convinced. You would still probably live just the way you are because of. Anyway. Apart from that, let us look at our local stories that did trend in the last 24 hours. And of course, we shall be looking at our international stories. And we'll have a song of the day, news will, and of course, much more will follow them. And uh, talking about stories, the speakership press dominates most of the stories. And uh, that is uh, the outgoing Speaker of Parliament, Rebecca Kadaga, said she will contest for the position of Speaker <coughs> for the 11th Parliament as an independent candidate. Kadaga revealed this to journalists at an impromptu press conference in Kampala. Kadaga's decision follows an earlier decision by the NRM's Central Executive Committee to endorse Jacob Olanya as NRM's candidate for the post. Former Speaker of Parliament Rebecca Kadaga said she will contest no matter what because she believes she has the support of members of Parliament. According to Kadaga, the scheme to fail her candidature was allegedly a well-planned move by some elements within the party. Midway through her handwritten statement, 
Kadaga's voice sounded a bit high as she made it clear that her campaign was being fogged from the right because she supports women and the ordinary Uganda. Although she declined to take questions from the journalist's pool, the Lusoga version of her statement resonated passion. Kadaga, who is the first woman to be elected Speaker of Parliament, also called upon the electorate to ask their members of Parliament to vote for her this Monday, the 24th May, at Kolo Ceremonial Ground. Now, of course, you may not have followed up the events of yesterday, and you are asking yourself how Honorable Rebecca Kadaga comes into Parliament as an independent for the Speakership race. Well, former Deputy Speaker of Parliament, Jacob Olona, has been endorsed by SEC of NRM to stand for Speaker of the 11th Parliament in the voting exercise that was held yesterday. And uh, today at Kolo Ceremonial Grounds, we will have the official elections for, mem uh, for Speaker of Parliament and Deputy Speaker of Parliament. Now, yesterday, two names had appeared, Rebecca Kadaga and Jacob Olana, were presented to the NRM topmost body by the NRM Party Electoral Commission for voting. This took place at State House in Teve, where the NRM Parliamentary Caucus convened to receive the position of SEC on the Speaker and Deputy Speaker positions. The SEC also voted names for candidates who expressed interest for the position of Deputy Speakership and three names of both of both Robin Anabanja and Theodore Sechkubo did not go past SEC level, while Anita Among, Robin Rakojo, and Thomas Tayewa were cleared and presented to the NRM Parliamentary Caucus for voting. However, NRM selected Bukedia 1 MP Anita Among to run for Deputy Speaker of Parliament under their flag. The decision was taken in the evening after Among emerged the victor in a poll among party members. Still looking at what transpired uh, regarding who becomes the Speaker and Deputy Speaker of the 11th Parliament as per the NRM party, the NRM Secretary General, Honorable Kasue Mumba, has asked Honorable Rebecca Kadaga to appreciate the 10 years given to her by the party to serve as the Speaker of Parliament. This comes after Kadaga announced her intentions to stand for the position of Speaker on an independent ticket after the Central Executive Committee did not consider her for the same position and endorsed Jacob Olanya, who has been her speaker, her deputy for the last 10 years. Lumumba spoke briefly to the media after announcing Jacob Olanya and Nita Among Anet as the party flag bearers for the position of speaker and deputy speaker to the 11th parliament. The voting will be held today in the first sitting at Kolo Independence Grounds, where the winner will finally be announced as the speaker and also the deputy speaker of the 11th parliament. Oh, Priscilla, interesting, indeed interesting. Independents are there, they are constitutionally accepted, and we also have a party under party constitution. But at the end of the day, we shall still have a speaker and a deputy, and a deputy speaker. speaker. And, and speaker. business will go on as usual. <laughs> yes, Felix. Uh, very really much of that is a discussion on the lips of every Ugandan, but uh, by close of business today, we will be definitely in the know of who will be uh, steering the ship of the August House for the next five years. Now we'll do a crossover to our international stories. We'll be looking at Israel and Hamas ceasefire holds as UN launches Gaza aid appeal. Now a ceasefire between Israel and Hamas has been held into a third day as mediators spoke to all sides about extending the period of calm after the worst outbreak of fighting in the years which saw at least 248 Palestinians including 66 children killed by Israel bombing. Now, Egyptian mediators uh, have been shuttling between Israel and the Gaza Strip, which is ruled by Hamas, to try and sustain the ceasefire, and have also met Palestinian President Mohammed Abbas in the occupied West Bank. Now, crossing over to Europe, while well, we're looking at a Italy cable car fall and 14 dead after accident near Lake Maggiore. Now, 14 people, including at least one child, have been killed and another child is seriously injured after a cable car fell on the mountain near Lake Maggiore in the northern, northern part of Italy on Sunday. The accident happened as a service transporting passenger from the resort town to a stressor up nearly 
near, near Mount Toroni Mountain in the region of Piedmont. Now images from the scene show that the wreckage lying is a steep wooded area. At least five Israeli nationals were among the dead, Israel's foreign ministry says. Now most of the victims died at the crash site with a death toll steadily rising on Sunday afternoon as the wreckage was searched. Now coming back to Africa, we're looking at Mount Nyiragongo. Volcanic eruption in the in Jara Congo leaves people homeless. Now residents in the Democratic Congo have turned to destroyed houses after a large volcano erupted with many searching for missing loved ones. Mount Nyiragongo turned the skies red and swept out a river of lava on Saturday but stopped short of Goma, a city two million two million just south of two miles two just south of the volcano. At least fifteen dead deaths have been found but of course numbers still rising given the occurring calamity in this area. Now at least nine of the victims died in a traffic accident as people fled and four others were killed as they tried to escape a prison while two were burnt to death. Government spokesperson came out to mention that. Well, uh, every day we do news as I've always said, we get more reason to glorify God and to thank him for the kind of life we live in this country. A uh, kind of life that is far from war, you can imagine now natural calamities, but nevertheless we also pray and send our heart out to all those people who are still suffering in different parts of the world. And uh, it's sad that you're looking at what's happening in Gaza, Hamas and Israel, it is simply natural causes. Man kill man. When you come to Congo, people are running away from natural calamities. Um, we need to find peace while we can, honestly. I don't know what your thought is just briefly, Priscilla and Robert. As people run away from natural calamities, others are bombing others to kill them. It's sad. Well, uh, there is what we can have control over and what I believe we can't have control over. For example, the Gaza killings. It's something that man has allowed to, to happen and is continuously happening. We have a God's chosen nation there. When we come to what is happening in Congo, this is nature and little can man do about this apart from maybe a bit of conserving but little can man do so let's what man has ability to prevent let's prevent it people dying in gaza this is something preventable but what is happening in congo maybe we could just uh, ensure that the effects of nature for example if experts because a volcano does not just erupt overnight the experts will tell you there are signs that show so we need just to be, our governments to be more proactive. I bring that to what happens in Wududa. You know, the rain seasons, uh, meteorology will speak. So let's be more proactive so that when nature speaks, the effects are very minimal. Well, of course, uh, much and that will be following with us. We'll be giving you updates on what's happening in Uganda and around Uganda, definitely around the world. But again, also we ask you to come onto our social media platforms and react to our poll question. Uh, give us your comments on what your expectations are and of course uh, that is share your expectations on the speaker in the 11th parliament yeah you can uh, share that on our facebook and on our twitter handles but now we'll take a break go for our song for the day when we come back we'll dive into our newsreel good morning
Kabila. Pick of the day on UBC. Brought to you by. In Africa, rainfall is a blessing and of course it's sharing just outside the studios and I'm sure even at Kololo ceremonial grounds where the actual voting is going to be happening, it's equally raining. Now this is a blessing, so we really don't know if it is a blessing then too, whoever will eventually be the speaker and the deputy speaker of parliament. But we just want to look at the 10th parliament to usher us into the 11th parliament. 
what were some of those challenges you also look at the ex expectations of the 11th parliament and how do we think things are going to move on better even after they have elected a speaker and the deputy in their first sitting today uh felix very interesting things are going to happen today yes we all expected that one day there will be a speaker i mean the rest was not expect to be this very tight but who says it was tight well it's, you know robert one, one thing that um, w the country has been lured mm -hmm. into if i may use that word is people try to make their issues mm -hmm. be everyone's issue mm -hmm. you, you get it mm -hmm. eh? mm -hmm. people try to make it look like everyone's like my issue mm -hmm. should be everyone that's why you come and you hear then he makes a press conference mm -hmm. i mean mm -hmm. so what please go mm. away mm. you know someone else will come and then they'll start oh me the speaker how can mm. i lose dude like lady or dude mm. come on we have had how many speakers over the years please Before find your life decision dominating then no you come and try to tell us sec is going to decide mm. sec is, this is a political institution mm. they have to play politics what did you expect you went into the dances of the monkeys. Yeah, it's that's, a, that's so like the what I'm saying mm -hmm. is that people mm -hmm. just they, they, when you say it, the, the whole week was okay. It is only for people who are interested. Honestly, mm -hmm. can you tell me that that NUP was at Tenta Hawks because of who will become what? Mm -hmm. You ca can you? Mm -hmm. You tell me FDC sure failed to get sleep members. <laughs> oh, oh, me, <laughs> Madam Kadaga, because you, you didn't sleep. Mm -hmm. Did, didn't you sleep? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. When you're talking about these things, we must put them in context that mm. for those who are interested, mm. it was a big deal. Mm. Someone in China, Mukakari, Mambogaza, and Onyakatari. So, you see, it politics. It's raining, they're looking me, for where to find that's the, the thing. their market. Mm. People are, for example, there's a story yesterday about uh, Moroto, the greater part of uh, Karamajong area. Mm. How they have not had LC5 chairman because mm. of tribal issues. Mm. Mm. They don't have roads. They even sent, can you imagine a region like that sent back money to a consolidated fund that it, yeah. it wasn't that used? Was used yeah. How dare you do such mm. a thing with the state of the, the region as you know it? Mm. You get it? So uh, for me, I just wanted to just put that in, in context for me that um, you see, the Western world was able to beat or is able to beat an individual, for example, the likes of Donald Trump, he was beat because of media. Mm. It's simply that. He was beat because of media, nothing else. Now, people use media to put up an image like everyone is concerned. Mm. You know? Let me just have a press conference, yeah. blow it out to them, <laughs> you know, <laughs> show pay yes. news agencies, pay mm -hmm. reporters to just talk about me, talk mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. me. And then it, they will make it look like Uganda. Mm -hmm. Hey, Uganda, ya chaye gundi. Come on. Well, very interesting uh, the way Felix has brought it out, which is actually the reality that some of these things are less concerning majority of Ugandans. But of course, you know, they have an implication on finally who will become or who will turn out to be the Speaker of the 11th Parliament. But before that, I want us to first look at uh, the 10th Parliament. And that is uh, what were some of the key challenges there? Because these will determine if some of these will extend into the 11th Parliament as well when we begin with the 10th Parliament. One of the challenges, Felix, we saw the levels of absenteeism, where the speaker, former speaker, over and over, would almost lose it. You people, you're never here when we have to discuss issues. In, even in committees, you absent yourselves. Plenary, you absent yourselves. But looking at some of these challenges. Yeah, Robert, just, uh, just also, uh, uh, you see, the problem of, for example, absenteeism is one among the very many problems of parliament. and. Uh, if because the only way for us to, to give judgment about or its ability to, to cater for its mandate, we have to probably revisit its its initial mandate, which is constitutional or academic or in practice. When you look at parliament, it's a arm of government mm. that stands between the judiciary, the executive. Its mandate is primarily legislation, but also majorly, primarily but also majorly, uh, a check and balance. That's why you see most of the people are going to go to parliament for vetting. The president will choose executive members and they will go to parliament. They, like this, like this, like this. Now, you notice that how you judge them, 
is not on how present they are in parliament, is how they have executed those constitutional roles as a parliament. Now, absenteeism, we are going to go on to individual merit. That's why many of them, mm. the members of parliament, you will never hear of. You say, ah. Actually, during the swearing in, the reactions were, hey, but we've never had this speaker of parliament actually saying anything in, in the 10th mm. parliament. Mm. And people are wondering, so where has this member of parliament been, been for yeah. all this time? So, like, the, 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 there's a point, there are activities you'll, you'll judge the entire parliament, the whole as one, and then you'll cross down now to individual merit. For example, when you see the region, like regions that have had challenge, for example, we have had a lot of land issues in Buganda. Mm. What has the, the Buganda, the people representing The caucus. Not even the caucus per se, mm. but the representatives. Mm. How far have they represented mm. the region in terms of these challenges? Today, Buganda owes the Uganda government over 200 billion. Mm. I have heard the, the Katikiro come out to say that. What have the Buganda mm. members of parliament or representatives mm. done about mm. that? It, because th that's how now you can assess individuals. Mm. But when you bring it at the whole spectrum of parliament as a whole, performance cannot be individual. Mm. For example, they will tell you even if these people did come to parliament, were able to do A, B, C, D. Now, the core values of parliament legislation how many laws have they made mm. what is the effect of those laws in terms of nation building mm. and in in different categories for example towards health towards education you get it mm. towards maternal health towards uh, infrastructure development just to mention but if you that's the best judgment we can give you mm. now the 11th parliament is faced with a big 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 challenge why that the Uganda five years ago didn't have a population of about now 47 million people. It had probably about 42. Mm. Secondly, it didn't have oil deals signed already. Mm. Now it has. Uh, it didn't have a growing opposition. That's something you must also look at, like now it has. For example, there was no noob. We had fairly, Uganda was fairly shared by opposition and the government and so all these challenges you look at issues of borders now there's the also the, the, the youth the subject of the youth the youth uh, that the have also numbers. become more engaging in, in politics affairs of the society. look at issues of integration mm. look at covid 19 mm. five years ago it wasn't a b it wasn't there now the 11th parliament comes in with all these thorns for them to sit on the question is how do they turn all these into opportunities and that's the biggest question that away from the politics the biggest fear for me mm. if you want my opinion is how do you dissolve mm. political differences and what i'm talking about grievous mm. heinous political differences lately that we see between the people power the fdc and uh, the dp against mm. performance shall we find a steady ground for people to benefit but amidst these political tensions. In, in that engagement, Felix, you then want to also look at the other challenge that we might have seen highlighting itself in the 10th parliament, and that's the challenge of the opposition arm. The opposition arm is literally meant to be the shadow government Definitely. that all gives you the alternative ways of doing certain things that may not be well perceived and received mm -hmm. uh, by the general discussions and policies mm -hmm. and laws that are put out there. Yeah. However, in assessment for most most of course it was fdc uh, that was uh, helming opposition in the 10th parliament how have they actually managed to bring to reality what their mandate is as opposition in parliament you see uh, the, 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 the 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 pain is is here that even what you're saying is the truth of the matter mm. but that is not what it should be because wh when you have a stance mm. between the so-called opposition vis-a-vis -vis the party in power, mm -hmm. where does that leave your representative, the, the representatives? Mm. Mm. But also, I, Felix, you, you the, get the point. Yes. But the, also, there's this other issue that uh, the 11th parliament, the 10th parliament, all is very clear that NRMC will have the majority. <coughs> and like Priscilla said, uh, objectivity here becomes a problem. And it's more on who wins, who takes that Exactly. Day. But who? Well, mo and most of the times, it may not be in favor of the electorate. 
it's, it's, and that's what I'm saying. Mm. That you mm. see, once we start talking about mm. objectivity, mm. we have left the people. I want you to to just tell me that in the puzzle of the NRM, the NUP, the FDC, where is someone in Kabila Maido who can't mm. access medical health? Mm. You you get the point that. Mm. It has totally defeated the purpose, which was w w what you said earlier, that the expectation to benefit from the parliament narrows every day, narrows every day. And the reason is simple, that the day we ushered into multi-party politics, we opened up the gates of individual benefit. You see, the late Colonel Mama Gaddafi uh, wrote a book about democracy. And he simply said that this is falsification of representation. That's why I can, you can never convince me as an individual, mm. never, that you can represent me. Mm. Never. That's a lie. Mm. Chidabu, your MP can never represent you. Uh, Felix, let I me get this clear uh, before Priscilla comes in. Yes. <laughs> you know, uh, there is what the old should be and actually what is happening presently. Because when you look at our forefathers, people that came up with representation, I believe that if it's done properly, people would be represented believed that, yes, you all can't go to the August House, but let's have a criteria through which people's views, opinions on specific issues can be represented. Is it that we are not doing this right? Because I'll take an example. Uh, Felix is right to say he doesn't feel represented. I don't know if Priscilla feels represented. Personally, I also don't feel represented by my member <laughs> of parliament. But the issue is... But what is your assessment of representation? Hasn't your parliamentarian decided on the laws? Have they, they, have they put in their input on the policies that have later been passed? I think they've done your part. Probably you're looking at it in terms of maybe your roads are not well done. Mm -hmm. uh, you, the economy in Much India is, is not so good. Uh, prostitution is still rampant in Much India. Those are your assessments. But did your member of parliament go to discuss those you in parliament? It? That is something we have to ask ourselves before we demand so much of people. Do us as the Wanaintri, the down Ugandan and understand the Appar role of the member of parliament. You know what happens? Uh, <laughs> there are structures through which we can have representation. I'll, if I ask my member of parliament, how many times have you come to these specific sittings? Because under decentralization, you see from grassroots, there are meetings, there are resolutions, and you have to partake of this for you to follow them up. MPs deny their, desert their constituencies, mm -hmm. if that is the right word. Then when we see them, you would wonder, okay, what you're talking about, where have you gotten this to bring to the floor of parliament? The chain of representation is there under multi party dispensation. But, but, but However, it is not respected at any one point by mm, members of parliament. Mm. Well, on, on that regard, first of all, I would like to uh, say well done to Madame Honorable Judith Navakova. Who she has what? constantly been back to her area that she represents, actually advocating for people, uh, you know, hi helping them with education mm. and health. She has yes, been what? very key, instrumental and visible in her constituency when it comes to those matters and issues uh, that she was able to help deliver, improve and work on. And, and we, we do commend such people well, for having done. So we cannot generalize so that the electorate all of them in that constituency have not done. <laughs> They didn't vote her back. <laughs> they didn't vote her back, but, but does anyway, it defeat the fact that, that she, she actually did what she did, did, what she did, she did and do. she was actually very visible. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, the question would be, into the 11th Parliament, how do we have these members of Parliament visible on ground? Because guess what? One of the critical roles that they have is to actually have people-centered development at the back of every sitting that you they know. go into. Now, you can only have people-centered development if you're actually having people engaging development. That means that you constantly have to ascertain areas that will engage with your people in terms of democracy, in terms of governance, in terms of politics, in terms of infrastructure, in terms of economy, development. The only way you're going to come back to the member of to as a member of parliament to parliament in this 11th sitting at August House is when you have actually continuously engaged as you did when you were looking for that vote. Do so continuously because then you will understand the plight of your people, how they're actually going through what they're going through and what their resolutions and that can better guide you to come and speak into the matter at hand so that they can benefit from a decision that has been made. Mm. Felix, uh, it was uh, the 10th parliament when they were celebrating 100 years of parliament 
and I spoke to the leader of opposition then, that is uh, Betty Awar Ochan, and she said one of the challenges of the 10th parliament has been size. They were about uh, 442. This time you have 529. And she said, with this huge parliament, yes, we have committees, but a member of parliament to discuss these issues and follow them up, given the big number, is also a challenge to us. We have a bigger parliament. <coughs> Actually, I don't even know where they are going to sit is complete because we had an extension just to accommodate some of these huge numbers. But let's look at the impact of numbers where some think i'd rather spend time in the constituency barring buying booze uh taking people to hospital than coming on the plenary where i may not even be seen effective or even in the committees as felix comes in this is where i i i challenge the people who are being represented into the 11th parliament mm -hmm. that if you reduce your member of parliament to only appear at your barriers and uh, market church openings and fa church fundraising, then it's actually you who's demeaning the power that is in your member of parliament. Over to you, Felix. Yeah, and uh, let me just pick it up from Priscilla's mm. point. You know, a member of parliament is not any different. Let me even start there. Mm. They are not any different. Uh, the only difference is that probably they, they, they can access the plenary, which is only to members of parliament. That is the only difference. But mm. they are simply representatives, and that's why they must be in attendance. Because, for example, how would you know that people need a new road if you don't live among them? Mm -hmm. You get it. Mm. How would you know we have issues of water if you don't live among the people? If you are, how would you know you must be on ground? And that's why members of parliament are picked from the people of Ababeda Wamu. Mm. You know, you, you cannot come from here, Priscilla and Gan, be a member of parliament of Moroto. Mm -mm it will be more best benefiting if they get someone from so i really don't find and and, and you see associating with people for me i think is simply character the members of the parliament who don't do those things and the others who don't mind doing them but back to the issue of size robert i have time and again said that uh, one of the most useless activities in terms of economic growth of a country is politics it is one of the most useless and why activities. Do you why do you think it's one of the most? Because I politics know. shapes the economy. Which shapes? shapes? Which shape? What, how Fixed members of parliament, Fixed how members of parliament, <laughs> the priorities they target as far as budget allocation okay. will For determine example, the economy. Thank you. The laws they pass will determine the economy. Thank you very much. How much tax does do politicians pay? Mm -hmm. In terms of taxation, well... <laughs> That is an you tell me a politician in this country that you make a good no kugwa konga at what do you expect? Unless they have business, what I'm saying, that bring that now. Do you know how much taxes people in Chikuwa pay who import things in one year? Someone can pay over 20 billion in taxes, and well, that's how that's how Chilawa you can ride on a good road. That's how which member of parliament has a shop <laughs> in business Go. as well. Do you think winning an election where you need about 500 between you and me, you know, why do they get this? You know, you know what? They you know, to. you spend more time with politicians than even I do. You know what I'm talking about, Robert. Mm. Let's be honest mm. if numbers were turned into economic growth of this country mm. this month before the, it ends, they are going to be given 200 million to buy cars. There is a person, a trader, somewhere downtown. Who is going to pay that money? Mm. Mm. As an individual. As a, so I know very yeah, many, tax. by the way. I yes. Have very many of them I know. I agree with you. And now taxes have hiked mm. up. These mm. guys are crying there at mm. Nakawa. Go there if you want to see old men crying. Mm. But the money, as they pay the money, mm. that money that would construct a hospital is going to be given to Honare Bochidabo mm. to, to buy drive a car. car. Mm. To buy On top a of fuel being car. covered. Even mm. those that were re-elected mm. mm. still get the money. To be very mm. serious. Mm. Now, when I say politics one of the most useless activities mm -hmm. in economic growth that's that's the, that's the background mm -hmm. i want you to come and tell me Chidabo, that the biggest taxpayer this year you are is giving a, a token is honorable Chidabo, who owns a factory that produces uh, nigina and the employees over 4000 people you, you, I don't know if you get, mm. and it comes from that point. So what the government it puts in is not in tandem with what comes so out. So when you bring the of issue of monetary. numbers, mm. you see everything must ride on growth, mm. economic growth. Mm. Because when the economy grows, 
we lift more people from poverty, it means we empower more people socio-economically to be able to deal with issues of health, academics, and livelihoodness. It means, Chirabu, if the economy is fairly doing well, if let's imagine if government is pumping more money in a mioga in these youth projects that the Chidabos are being uh, given skills, young girls are being given skills, this money is going in the right place. Because if President, presidential initiative on skilling the girl child has about 1,000 girls, and all of them live, they can do hair, cosmetology, yeah. so you are building an economy. When you give him of parliament 15, 500 million to do what, what economy are you building? What is the contribution of a car? To economic growth <laughs> because <laughs> this is how we assess transport <laughs> transporting a member of parliament and, and this is the <laughs> problem <laughs> Robert. you give so it doesn't fill the potholes mm. neither does it rain so on how would you <laughs> register for a good road if it has, you've given him a car not to fill the potholes mm. but also you give 500 million or 200 million to a member of parliament of kampala central mm. where the parliament is workable and you give 200 million to someone in chisoro mm. you give the same money to someone in lira where is the equity? Mm. Five years, if all of you have driven new cars, mm. any of you has driven a new car, five years, a new car, you have not started even dealing with the mechanical issues. Why doesn't Parliament buy these cars? Just like ministries. Mm. If you come, Honorable Minister Presida, mm. if you've been thrown out, leave the car for the next minister. That's the way to we saw Honorable Jaco uh, Bolanya putting the car aside. Mm. This the is, car is for, for the, the speakership mm. office. Mm. Where well, you will be accessed because yes. under government policy, five years, so, a vehicle mm. is suitable for? For another five years. No, now, no, so, now, no, 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 no. What policy? And those are the policies <laughs> I'm talking about. Mm. Who passes those policies? Honorable Chidabo, you've been in parliament, member of parliament, Kampala, mm. five years. You, we gave you 130 million mm. last year. And even the other year, we gave you another 150 or 200. Mm -hmm. Even we're going to add you. Yeah. Now, is this some sort of busy? How does this help a child in Kavari mm. who cannot access education? And then you start abusing Museveni for what, honestly? Mm -hmm. These are things that, honestly, you attack him, this man, you abuse Museveni, Havana Tebasoma. They cut even about two hundred million. Maybe we did. Boba Agala, do they so love Felix, this country? So, Felix, are you composing the brutal of Parliament to determine some of these issues? Will be the numbers into. as good as useless. Mm -hmm. They are good for political gerrymandering. <laughs> mm. mm. That I'll use my numbers. Mm. Priscilla will use them. Chira will use them. But even most recent, it is becoming dangerous mm. because the numbers are being shared almost now. Mm. They, they are being taken. Mm. So <laughs> before you know, in the next five years, mm. you may you may find you that we are cutting. We know we may we, they, they will cut <laughs> because the relevance of numbers. Will know. But I think I'm seeing more people are, are putting on the floor demanding for more representation. And that's the thing, Omani. Just lastly, Robert. Yes. Politics is like he uh, says. used to say. Law is a shark, always like a horse. That it is good when you're on top of the horse. You're the one who's mm. calling the shot. But the day you're not on the horse, my dear, mm. I have seen, I remember the, the, the former vice president, mm. my, 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 my senior and very good friend, mm. the professor of Kenya. Mm. When he was in parliament as vice president, there are so many things he used to say. Mm. But I remember the day he was called to the constitutional mm. court in terms of the Chogang. If you saw Mbaba's when he was interdicted in Jinja, mm. when he was going for the guys, he was go forward and whatever, the laws he passed beat him. They, they just look, well, go brought this law in Kampala mm. of the minister. So when he was crying like a bad as, so sometimes these things are, are only for selfish purposes, but they definitely stop working for you and they work against you. Mm. Hey? They, they, they will. Parliament must primarily be for the people. The reason why it is not for people, mm. because people use parliament every day. Mm. Uh, finally, Priscilla, uh, we look at the 11th parliament. This is going to be, of course, the largest parliament in the history of Uganda, but also one that is dominated with a huge number of youth in the history of Uganda since we've been having our parliaments. Uh, when we have these two big size, youth, and also with a new form of opposition, that is Danube as the leading opposition in this parliament. Just a picture of what you should expect there. 
Well, now the challenge actually for the 11th parliament is that you're going to have people that understand things differently, will not be seeing eye to eye on a number of things simply because of that one challenge, which is these are young people and they have perceived things uh, uh, differently. They probably were not there in the before, you know, mm -hmm. kind of those peace that and stability. That yes, vis-a-vis -vis those who Muhammad have history. There are more hungry. I'm telling you. Who? <laughs> Please. The, the youth or? The incomers. They are yes. more hungry. Oh, oh. Okay. All right. <laughs> well, so again, all these are, we are waiting to see how they're going mm. to shape. They but really while they're shaping the history of the 11th parliament yet to come after five years, come 2026, of course, the 11th parliament will need a speaker. It's going to need a deputy speaker. And today, the 24th of May, 2021, we are having elections of the speakership and the deputy speakership. Now, it's going to be presided over by Chief Justice Alfonso Winidolo. Now, also, when it is done, elections are done, then the President of the Republic of Uganda is going to swear in the Speaker of Parliament and also the and Deputy the Speaker and hand over the instruments of power. But we want to know and we want you to share your expectations of the Speaker come the 11th Parliament. As they start business today, for you, what do you expect from them? And a couple of reactions here coming through on Twitter as you can have that conversation ongoing and respond to it. On Twitter, we have Maridadi Karamaga. You're saying, unfortunately, the seniors struck elders whom we had respect four are now turning into personal business at Parliament of Uganda. Now that's one of the reactions that are coming through. Uh, we do have other people that are having their reactions as and when they come through. We're definitely going to be having that conversation. However, one of our very own here on the team of Good Morning Uganda graduated yesterday from the 71st graduation ceremony held at Makere University. Jimmy Tamale, we do celebrate you. And congratulations to you. And uh, we do expect a lot from new engineer Jimmy Tamale now uh, that you have graduated <laughs> in your capacity. Uh, what do they usually tell you? You get a Yes, we also had Molen Kenyana. Graduated from the School of uh, things. Meteorology. Meteorolo. That, that one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, thank you so much for keeping those comments coming in. And please, our uh, poll question is up for you there. What should we expect in the 11th Parliament? I predict more boycotts and walkouts there, but I also predict more of. Uh, but I'm also happy, Robert, that, that we'll be having the likes of uh, uh, this gentleman used to stand for president. A bad one. Yes, I'm, I'm yes. really happy for him. Mm -hmm. I, I think he's senior, and how I pray that. Uh, uh, the nope gave him to be leader of opposition. He's mm -hmm. senior, mm -hmm. I must say, he's senior. And, and I expect a lot from him mm -hmm. in particular. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, Cecilia Ogwal is also there for the fixed term in the opposition. So we hope we'll still see the seniors, who may <laughs> not be so many. Uh, General Moses Al is also there. And the preamble of our constitution has, an, has that issue of keeping on reminding us for remembering where we came from. So we still have the many where we came from and those that did not witness what where we came from stands for. But hope that too we'll be able to integrate very well and have proper discussions. When we return, we'll be looking at what is trending in the print media and of course Molen will also be ready after the traffic updates to take you through weather and of course more there. We'll return shortly. Live from Now Avenue in UBC Studios. This is Good Morning Uganda. What does it mean to be closer together? It's taking the last bus home for a surprise visit. Closer together is strangers finding a connection. It's bringing home something much more than a box. It's the warmth of home, or the beginning of something new. There's magic in sharing the things that we learn, because it's those things that bring us close together.
dependent. That is the speakership rest. Then COVID-19, severe cases rise in young people. Uh oh Okay, it's not about the elderly most. Now young people also. Then on corruption, Museveni warns culprits against the vice. And looking at Kampala, why KCC is suspended opening of the old taxi park. Remember, it was due to be opened over the weekend, but uh, land run was there, uh, also became an issue. Then thousands flee volcano eruption. That is in the Democratic Republic of Congo. And here we see Letio build. That is a three million dollar empire from just 300,000. How did this person do it? Then also border threats here, universities, uh, West Farms on the spot. Felix with the morning. Now on the Daily Monitor, Kadaga to run on independent tickets, a key fight fall of Kamoli MP birthday, and Olanya from fierce critic to darling now how sex sealed Kadaga's fate. Now, in other, in other stories, police officer slashes his way to PhD, COVID-19 job shortage, what next, and the solution PhD holders have for us. And of course, in DR Congo's mount, uh, that is a Nyiragongo, displaces thousands, and when your pet is not safe for you. Of course, inside the papers, we're looking at uh, manipulation is Museveni's password, says General Muntu, and residents return home as volcano lava flows stops. Now in the archives, from the archives here, Ronald Mwenda Mutebi, the king, uh, during his coronation in Nagarabi, what you saw, 1993. And of course, today in history, Amin raids Mengo, Kabaka runs to exile. And again in history, soldiers kill people in Namugongo Shirai. In the new vision, still we look at, that is, uh, <coughs> aid says UK Johnson lied about COVID-19. What is that? Uh, the new vision brings you more. We look at uh, cases of COVID-19 up among young people. So please stick to the standard operating procedures. Then uh, looking at how the region is doing in terms of death due to COVID-19, Rwanda has 309, 349, uh, Kenya 3,049, and South Sudan has 115 cases there. And also worst it countries, I'll look at Africa, we have South Africa, Morocco, Tunisia, Ethiopia, Egypt, and Libya. Today in history, it was on this very date, the 24th of May, the year 1991, when a police and NRA held a meeting. That was the top military and police officers met in the army commander's office in Kampala and resolved that all operations be well coordinated. Still on the same date, the 24th of May, the year 1991, we see Cubans leave Africa. That was the last Cuban soldier in Angola picked their bags for the final flight home to end 31 years of military involvement in the name of revolutionary soldiers in Africa. Now in sports, uh, we're looking at Mukwara disarms UPDF for URA win and nominations for, for FUFA top seat start. Now, of course, I will see Aguero signs out with Man City. Now, uh, prisons beat UPDF to claim first netball league victory and synergy big talent says unbeaten. Now, Musagala fails to run in DL over visa delays and Okoth six more in himself after drawing UCU canons. Now, of course, a young promises return stronger. That is in Motocross and Uganda Tanzania contest as close call. Here we look at sports in the new vision YFC Al the favorite and uh, of course there are some funding by absa bank uh, two that is uh, our boxing team there and 61 days to go that is to the world olympics but these and more ruben will be here to take you through the world of sports we'll be heading to priscilla naroga who will be taking you through traffic updates and then molen will be here to give you more information regarding weather i hope she also discusses more regarding the volcano and the connection with the gold we'll return shortly keep it on ubc tv
Even a person who is not registered for VAT may voluntarily use IFRIS to issue an e-receipt to take advantage of the benefits of IFRIS, including reliable record keeping, quick process of tax claims or refunds, fair tax price assessments, among others. Uganda Revenue Authority. Developing Uganda together. COVID-19, if we get vaccinated now, observe social distancing, wear masks properly, sanitize or wash our hands with soap and water regularly. Together we can defeat this enemy. Studios. This is Good Morning Uganda. The rains have come down. Surprisingly, we didn't see this uh, coming through. Neither was there a wind to actually give you the detection. Neither were the clouds thin, lean, as Molen usually calls them, or she's been taking us through this whole weather and climate change thing. But, of course, as and when it rains, it does affect the flow of business. Now, I'm sad that it's starting on a Monday morning, meaning the traffic jam is going to be hefty in the morning and later on equally in the evening, starting from 4 PM. But let's look at some of these routes that actually do experience some sort of flooding, especially in the western part of Kampala. Now, picking it up from the traffic lights that we do have here at the Ginger Road, of course, you would be expecting some sort of traffic jam, especially for traffic that is coming in from Kampala Road onto Ginger Road. But of course, you know that this is purely managed by the traffic lights. So let us look at areas that are not uh, managed by traffic lights. And one of them is the Airtel roundabout where you do have a red zone that is stretching all the way coming in from Nakawa trying to connect with the roundabout and get into the heart of the city. Now what is surprising is that the red zone is up until where you do have electoral commission uh, headquarters starting from. Away from that you do have a green zone. So something typically shows you that there is a challenge just right here with the intersection of vehicles coming in from Nakawa and intersection of vehicles coming in from Bugolobi. That is where you're having the challenge. Challenge. Away from this challenge, the rest of the route is actually very, very clear. Now, some of the flooding does happen in Bugolovi and uh, some of our other flooding. Most recent pictures that we have been seeing is uh, around Lugogo Gem. There's been a lot of flooding that has been experienced in that particular area. Now, interesting to note, about over a year, we had this particular route between the Elta Roundabout and Nakawa being worked on. And one of the things that they worked on was the drainage system. So then the question comes in, how come we are still facing the same challenge of drainage? Every time it rains, it's actually flooding. Most recently, you saw a video of uh, you know one of those young men that decided to swim in the floods that happened in Nakawa. So following the main route here, as we can see it this morning, into Lugogo, of course, we get to see the red zone stretching all the way into Lugogo Bypass or where you do have game. Now, of course, you do also have traffic lights that do manage the traffic here. You do have a red zone that is stretching all the way from the Lugogo Bypass trying to connect to probably Ginger Road. You also do have some red zones that are happening in the deep side of um, Kololo where you do have a Wampel Avenue. You do have some traffic that is trying to connect to Lugogo Bypass probably because of how the traffic is looking like on the air roundabout they are choosing to use this Wampel Avenue as an alternative route to be able to connect to the bypass and they connect into Nakawa or possibly also connect into the likes of Bukoto and Tinder through this particular route which is alongside DHL Express Uganda. Now when you look at that red zone, interpretation of that jam 
with the rains that are coming down right now do expect some serious flooding to happen and as you see for Lugogo south you do have a red zone that is also picking up here but that's because of the traffic lights now this particular area is where you do have floodings please note we do have Chadondo here Chadondo was originally a swamp Gem was originally a swamp and this is where I will bring in Molen later on the fact that we have to consider the terrain of area codes before we actually think of development of infrastructure getting into the, some of these areas it's one of the reasons as to why we're having the constant flooding around Lugogo into Nakawa area zone but let's continue with the traffic and see how that fits into the rest of Nakawa as you can see, you do have orange into red zones picking up uh, for traffic that is coming in from New Port Bell Road and also traffic that is accessing New Port Bell Road. And then you get to look at the traffic lights, you would be expecting red zones for traffic going and a red zone for traffic that is coming into the heart of the city, but that is out of our control and left to what we call the traffic lights. However, you do see a red zone that is stretching all the way from Spear Motors. You do have red zones that are stretching all the way from stretcher and tinder uh, catalima road you do have all this bring in traffic and pouring them onto the main route which is the ginger route and the red zones are stretching all the way into chireka banda and the likes but now we come back to this very big question and here is where i would like to engage my sister Today is Brother's Day, but <laughs> I, I, I definitely look forward to engaging Molen into these conversations. Molen, yes. we have looked at uh, this particular area. Over a year ago, they did reconstruction of this area, and that was putting into consideration drainage. However, we're still suffering the same issue when it comes to drainage. Why don't we have consideration of the terrain in terms of appreciating that nature is part of us and we must find alternative ways of infrastructure? Yes, yes. Good morning, Priscilla. And uh, I'm, I'm happy we're talking about this, especially now that we've seen that we are in this rainy season where it's, it's raining too much. But you find that we still have an issue of drainage within the city. It's really unfortunate. And I think for me, it comes down to not planning properly. Because when you look at it, it also the terrain matters. Mm -hmm. How the, lo the location of the place matters in terms of how you actually do the drainage but also people who have taken up the swampy areas that are the main drainage areas of this city for kcca they look at uh, if we are if this water is coming through maybe the drainage system they have put over the roads but the end point where is the water going but if we find that also these places are blocked and have been tampered with then it lags it create, creates that lagging of the water even through the drainage channels that uh, the, the city has put up so that still creates a challenge priscilla okay all right now we had another question uh, that was engaging robert and felix and we were asking ourselves what's the relation between weather climate and the natural resources because in my opinion i feel like what we just experienced in uh, near Gongo mountains where you had the eruption uh, there is a relationship between that mountain eruption and the gold that is found in these areas of Congo yes yes uh, it's unfortunate for our brothers and sisters there in eastern Congo that we see Nyiragongo erupting again after almost 15 years because it was last seen in two 2002. So that's really uh, some of the footage that was coming in through from Nyiragongo showing us the areas that actually uh, uh, had this eruption and that is Goma and also the surrounding areas. We saw really a lot of residents that were displaced going up to uh, Rwanda to really find residents there. But okay. we are told from the recent reports that we do see some of the people starting to return towards uh, their home. Of course, most affected is uh, the people of Goma, and then you also do have the borders uh, that we do extend ourselves from the western part of Uganda. We do have um, Kasese, you do have Kabale. You have all these areas that are close to these mountains. Now, the experience from Rwanda was that much as they could see the lava and the eruption from the Githeni area, one of the challenges that they had crossing over into Rwanda after this eruption was one of them, the fact that they now do not have air 
especially when it comes to oxygen that people use, breathe in. They also had another challenge of earthquakes that is an aftermath that extended to the side of Rwanda as a border. What expectations do we have in the aftermath of this eruption onto the side of Uganda? Uh, yes, Priscilla, I think much of what we get as an effect here in Uganda is seen in the southwestern part of the country, that is across Kisoro, Kabale, mostly in terms of visibility, having some of that dust transferred uh, uh, by the winds towards southwestern Uganda, but so far really not so much effect compared to what the neighboring areas in Congo were actually getting. What we had mostly is just the part of the mass to the aerosols, the dust particles that were in the atmosphere, but mostly towards southwestern Uganda. Other than that, we didn't really have too much effect. Okay. Yes, Priscilla. All right. So now, you know, we've been having a rainy season. Um, and in terms of climate, this is very close to our climate. Does this affect the patterns that have been developing as far as uh, weather and climate are concerned on the Ugandan side? Not really, not really. Uh, the relation there is, is not defined because if you look at uh, uh, volcanic eruption is actually um, uh, a natural currency, but also recently we've had heavier floods and uh, yesterday we saw reports from uh, Red Cross also uh, showing us a landslide in Kirembe. So it's, uh, we still have those extreme weather events that are happening but also most likely the, uh, something that we've been alerting people about, especially if you in your, in your area you're seeing an occurrence of heavy uh, rainfall, most likely be on the lookout for a mudslide. Now that's a mudslide that happened uh, yesterday in Kirembe, where over 19 homes were displaced, about 130 people actually were displaced from their homes from this mudslide and that was a devastating effect you can see uh, some of the reports coming in from red cross the people that were uh, camped at some at a primary school in kirembe trying to find shelter there and red cross bringing in there was also a body of um, a woman in the age bracket of 60 who was also found dead uh, along river nyamamba also still due to this effect of the heavy rains that were over Kasese in uh, the last All right. 48 one last, hours. One last question, Molen. Yes. Um, uh, while there's that saying, when one person coughs, the rest of Africa sneezes, um, is, there, uh, uh, is there at one point an expectation that uh, mountains nearing this particular occurrence could sneeze anytime soon? For example, mountain Renzori. Uh, no, because you look at the volcanic mountains, most, most, we do have uh, volcanoes even uh, here, mostly southwestern Uganda, but most of them are really dormant. And with volcanic erup eruption, you find that the mountains which have erupted in the past are most likely to have the same occurrence in the future compared to the ones that are still dormant. So looking at Uganda, Mount Renzori specifically, no. But the dormant volcanoes, volcanic mountains that we have, also we can still look at them, but still they are dormant and don't pose any threat in the future, in the near future at least, Priscilla. So yep. you can, uh, you, you're safe for now. <laughs> Yes. All right, while everyone is trying to get into the heart of the city, it's uh, raining and we did not have expectations of this. At least I didn't see the clouds we talk about, neither did I feel the breeze that you always refer to that is introducing us to rain. <laughs> what should we be expecting on the start of a wonderful week as today when we have Kololo ready to have a speaker and a deputy speaker sworn in? Yes, and I think as Chirabo always says, uh, rain is a sign of good luck. So I think as we usher in this new parliament, it's good that we are starting off with the rains, really. So uh, it's, it's a good start. Rainy, bumpy start, but it's a good start when you compare it in terms of luck. It is good luck. But we did start off with that rain system across Kampala. It is still raining over a few places. And the system is spreading across much of central Uganda. So that's the, the rainy conditions that we're seeing even now. We do have much showers, though, across uh, the Midwestern part of the country. Fort Porto there having much of that rain. And this started a little bit earlier than what we had here in Kampala. So it is too much rain over here. Also, we're continuing up to Chenjojo. 
and also in Toroko, these areas are already having that rain as we speak. We also have part of uh, the Choga region where we have Buyende there also dealing with much more of those rains. And we also have the clouds are starting to develop towards Hoima. So Hoima, do look out for that training system. It is coming your way anytime soon this morning. The rest of the country seems to have mostly in terms of sunny and cloudy conditions, much cloud developing across Arua and northwestern Uganda. We do have that system that is starting to develop across Arua. So most likely that will also be bringing us rains across that area. And also considering uh, what we're seeing towards the central parts of northern Uganda. Now we also look at that rain system that is still moving. Uh, if you look at the side of Congo, still too much coming in towards western Uganda. That could also be bringing us rains later. Now I also wanted to talk a little bit about uh, the forecast that we have today, especially uh, looking at uh, the Choga region. You find that most areas actually within this region do experience the same type of weather mostly accompanied by lightning and thunder. So this is one place that you have to look out for and uh, be aware that it could be thundering any time, could be lightning any time, and you do need to take precaution. Do not take shelter under tall trees. Just beware of the situation when you see heavy showers coming in as this place is prone to also having thunder and lightning. Same, uh, same condition actually for areas of Luero, Nakasongola, most rains that we, we experience over there are mostly thunder showers and we are always on the lookout for the possibility of lightning and thunder. Also, we advise you to take precaution if you see heavy showers within the region. And now that the rainy season is almost ending, we do have that transition and usually the rains that we receive during that time uh, will be uh, not a little bit uh, not ordinary because of the transition. So do be on the lookout. Uh, like we've seen now here in, in Kirembe having a mudslide. It just starts as rain and then continues. It comes heavy. Before you know it, we do have extreme events happening there. Now let's dive in and take, at our forecast. Look, take a look at our forecast this morning. We do have those rains still across central part of Lake Victoria Basin. That is Kampala already having those rains, also Mukono coming through and in Tebe those rains will be reaching your way as well. Wakiso also starting to develop up, but temperatures will be at 26 degrees Celsius as the morning goes on. Now we have southwestern Uganda where we do look at Mbarara, Ibanda, Bushenyi and Rubirizi, mostly in terms of sunny and cloudy conditions. Quite a pleasant morning over there at a beautiful beautiful 26 degrees celsius now we also look at uh, that is the part of uh, central which is ruero wobblenzi we look at bururi and nakaseke we are looking at intervals of sunny and cloudy conditions but also those showers expected ca to come your way this morning although temperatures will be quite warm at 28 we do have a 28 as well across soroti katakui and Kumi, and uh, we do expect intervals of sunny and cloudy conditions. Much sunshine, though, although the cloud will be uh, also in intervals. Now we look at some more areas. We do have Mbale, Bududa, that is to the uh, island, highland areas. We're expecting mostly intervals of sunny and cloudy conditions. We do have beautiful 26 as well. It will feel a little bit cold. But as the day goes on, we will start to see a warming trend over there. Now we move forward to what we have for you across western Lake Victoria Basin. We do have Masaka, Zimbabwe, Rakai, with mostly cloudy conditions. We do have that sun that is coming through and temperatures will be at 25 degrees centigrade. Most of the areas today morning dealing with intervals of sunny and cloudy conditions and also the rainy conditions that we are that we are talking about. Now that's all from me today. I do wish you a good day, but it has started off with that rain, but please do enjoy the day as we start the week. My name is Molin Kenyena, and I will be joining you tomorrow, same time. Good morning. Live from Now Avenue in UBC Studios, this is Good Morning Uganda.
Topic of the Day on UBC. Brought to you by... was brought to you by we've cut and reduced our mtn momo withdrawal rates now you can withdraw mobile money at the lowest rates you also get mtn central points when you deposit send and withdraw mtn mobile money visit our momo agents countrywide and withdraw mobile money at our reduced rates from 1st may 2021 everywhere you go mtn Kapo, you seem to be in a hurry. Where are you going to? I'm going to pay URA a visit. But you can access URA online. Why pay a visit? To know more about the Kakasa Business Solutions, namely digital tracking solution, the voluntary disclosure program and electronic fiscal receipting, and invoicing solution, which have turned my business around. You know I need to be on top of my game to protect my <laughs> It's taking the last bus home for a surprise visit. Closer together is strangers finding a connection. It's bringing home something much more than a box. It's the warmth of home or the beginning of something new. There's magic in sharing the things that we love. Because it's those things that bring us close together. Prosper with Airtel Money today. Agent application and registration is free of charge. All you need to submit as a sole proprietor business is a letter from the business owner requesting for a SIM card and the purpose of the SIM card. Certified copy of certificate of registration of the business issued by URSB, certified copy of statement of particulars of the registered business and supporting statutory declaration in verification of the particulars, copy of valid trading license, copy of operational license issued by the relevant regulatory authority, copy of TIN certificate issued by URA, valid national ID for Ugandan proprietor, or passport for foreign national, including a valid immigration entry permit, work permit, visa, or resident certificate, colored passport size photograph of the proprietor and handler of the business, proof of current physical address of the business, tenancy agreement or utility bill in the name of the proprietor or landlord, or LC1 introduction letter confirming ownership and location of the business. You will be informed of your application status within a maximum of five working days, still free of charge. Upon successful agent application, Airtel will provide training and customized branding material for your business location, still free of charge. To register, call us today on 1-6 toll-free. Airtel Money, 
Simple, secure, borderless. Airtel is regulated by Uganda Communications Commission. Live from UBC Studios in Kampala. This is Good Morning Uganda. This is a cold morning on the 24th of this month. Well, a big day also in the parliamentary affairs where we're going to see the 11th parliament elect the speaker and deputy speaker of parliament that will preside over business for the next five years. With me in studios is an experienced politician on issues regarding uh, parliament affairs. This is Honorable Mike Sebaru. He was in the CA. They are representing the youth in central region, uh, the people that drafted the constitution that we cherish today. He was also in the seventh parliament he has been in the East African Legislative Assembly, the Pan-African Parliament. So when we talk about issues of parliament, I'm sure we have a person who has experience and can discuss such issues. Uh, Honorable, you're most welcome. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, my brother Kirabo. Uh, I, I request that maybe you allow me uh, to remove since we are socially yeah. well distanced. So good morning all our viewers out there. It's a chilly morning and um, I, I really wish you well as we engage uh, on deliberation and discussion of uh, the topic as set out by the moderator, Chirabo. Well, we're looking at the speakership race and the deputy speakership race. Very hotly contested is the speakership race. The last time, Honorable, I discussed with you regarding issues of the speakership, this is what you told me. That for us as NRM, we'll eventually come up with a single candidate and that issue will be sorted and thereafter everybody will follow suit as long as they're members. And I asked you, are you sure that members of the NRM are all loyal to the decision of the most effective organ or top organ of the party? You guaranteed me that yes, I'm very sure we've done this before and we shall do it. As we speak today, you have an independent but also a senior member of the party contesting against the official candidate of the party. Yeah, mm, uh, definitely what I told you still pertains. I did indicate that uh, the party has a responsibility and an interest in who leads uh, the second arm of government, which is parliament. Uh, you'll appreciate that uh, the party is the one that won the vote and won the mandate and therefore it is the party that deploys um, different members of the party uh, to serve in different positions mm -hmm. uh, and that still pertains uh, and that what transpired is the process of deployment by the party you express interest and the party gives its due considerations and there are many factors that are involved in determining who should at a given point in time. So that is a process that was undertaken and that is the process through which uh, two candidates were produced for the speakership uh, position and the deputy speaker. And uh, again, the process continues because today we are going to have parliament do its first uh, responsibility or task because when a parliament is constituted, when MPs are sworn in, uh, the first business of the House is to elect the Speaker and Deputy Speaker. And that is what is going to happen uh, in Kololo. And on the basis of that, NRM has a candidate for each of the positions. And for the position of the Speaker, uh, Honorable Jacob Olanya went through the process and was uh, recommended as the flag bearer for NRM. And uh, Anita Among, Honorable, was recommended as the candidate for deputy speaker. Mm. So that is the position within mm. the uh, jurisdiction of the party, the procedures and the processes and the constitution. So what we want to see and what I hope to see 
is that um, uh, all members of the party do respect uh, the outcome of the processes of the party arriving at a candidate. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, uh, in multi-party politics, we look at a party, party, party loyalty is very important. Mm -hmm. And party loyalty also goes with the party discipline. Mm -hmm. And if I'm um, to illustrate uh, different jurisdictions where senior members of parties have behaved in a manner that is in conformity with the parties. I, I want to bring uh, the example of Tanzania. In terms of deployment, uh, the late President Julius Mwalimu Nyerere would deploy uh, party members in different ways, and, and some of them would be very interesting. Uh, we had uh, the, uh, President Al Hassan Mwinyi. At one time, he was a Minister of Foreign Affairs. Then he was deployed as an ambassador. Uh, but eventually he became the president of the country. Mm. Even uh, the later president um, of, uh, again, uh, Tanzania, mm. uh, who was also a minister of foreign affairs, mm. and he was redeployed as an ambassador. Mm. And I think uh, the late uh, Julius Nyerere uh, used to use that to be able to, to, to measure mm. the level of, uh, of, uh, of discipline, of the cadres of the party, and the loyalty. Because at the end of the day, it is about the party. Let's understand yourself. this, Honorable, very well. You've mentioned Tanzania, and of course Tanzania has had one of the strongest parties, that is Chama Chama Pinduzi. Yes. We look at the foundation of that. But let's come back home to Uganda. We have, uh, we went into multi party through a referendum, so that is accepted. But then we have what the country's premier, the constitution says. When we had issues of uh, rebel MPs, the independent factor was in our constitution. When you look at the present situation, I think that's around uh, Article 82 of the constitution, anybody, a member of parliament, qualifies to be a speaker. So when you look at precedents that have happened over a time, uh, has the party NRM, or have political parties, really been solid enough that a person knows there's an implication in case I don't comply or I'm not loyal to my party? Yeah, the, 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 there is. Like the Chama, Chama Pinduzis. Yeah, there is. Uh, definitely the party has a disciplinary committee uh, which may be called upon to deal with matters that are related to uh, discipline or uh, uh, flouting uh, the, 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 the procedures. Yeah. But again, NRM is a very democratic party. It, it has uh, also yeah. created a bit of leverage. Yeah. Uh, that's why you see that uh, there are those that uh, go into the party primaries, they don't make it, and they come back as independents. Yeah. And it has been uh, gracious enough to give them a bit of uh, accommodation through signing of memorandums of, uh, yeah. of, uh, of understanding. And what that's why you hear, does that set? That's why you hear mm. of uh, NRM leaning. Mm. But I think when it gets to a, a level like uh, Speaker of Parliament, mm. I think the situation may be a little different. Because now you are talking about mm. someone deployed mm. to oversee an arm of government mm. on behalf of the party. Now, for you to be independent at that level, uh, I, I don't even see the NRM leaning aspect being uh, quite uh, uh, useful. So uh, the, the, the precedent that is set by that is unprecedented, actually. Mm -hmm. That is unprecedented. We've not mm -hmm. had it at the level of uh, parliamentary speaker. But what I want to believe is that at the end of the day, the party, through its members, mm -hmm. appreciating that all processes were undertaken, uh, the members will definitely do the right thing and elect uh, the person that they can't, the, the party has sponsored. That is what I expect to happen. What does this mean to internal democracy into the NRM? We recently saw we had uh, Maogla North, we had Shats, and we had Sodo. This is uh, something that came to the top organs, but finally it was left for the people. We've had issues where some positions have continuously been reinvested within the party and some positions left. So isn't this a bit of inconsistency that is causing commotion or confusion within the party that has to be dealt with? No, I don't want to say it is uh, inconsistent because uh, mm. some of the, uh, for instance, when you talk about the issue of Sodo, that was mm. at a parliamentary primary, mm. 
and uh, the, the, the leverage that you need to undertake at different levels. Uh, when you come to like um, the speaker, uh, you really want to use that. That is someone who is going to head uh, the, 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 the an arm of government. And there is a precedent that, uh, that was uh, set before uh, when all through the speakers of parliament have gone through the same processes. Mm -hmm. So there is nothing inconsistent this time round. Mm -hmm. It has been SEC that recommends and that has been a process ever since we went to Mount Party. So when you say it's consistent, then I don't know what you are talking about mm -hmm. because the procedures have always been such that SEC recommends and the caucus and then we continue to have uh, the person recommended being voted for right from uh, uh, second uh, actually was it wapa mm -hmm. it, it, it has been the same it has been the sec that has been doing this mm -hmm. so sec has been very consistent there's nothing peculiar this time around that came up because the procedure the process mm -hmm and the organ responsibilities have always been undertaken that way. Mm. Yes. Well, uh, we'll just take a short break and joining us on set will be a lady who was once at the helm of the speakership, that is the East African Legislative uh, Assembly, Honorable Margaret Nantongo Ziwa, and she'll be part of this discussion as we look at Kadaga running as an independent and the speakership press. Good morning, let's return shortly. with Airtel Money today. Agent application and registration is free of charge. All you need to submit as a sole proprietor business is a letter from the business owner requesting for a SIM card and the purpose of the SIM card. Certified copy of Certificate of Registration of the Business issued by URSB. Certified copy of Statement of Particulars of the Registered Business and Supporting Statutory Declaration in Verification of the Particulars. Copy of Valid Trading License. Copy of Operational License issued by the relevant regulatory authority. Copy of TIN Certificate issued by URA. Valid National ID for Ugandan Proprietor or passport for foreign national, including a valid immigration entry permit, work permit, visa, or resident certificate, colored passport size photograph of the proprietor and handler of the business, proof of current physical address of the business, tenancy agreement or utility bill in the name of the proprietor or landlord, or LC1 introduction letter confirming ownership and location of the business. You will be informed of your application status within a maximum of five working days, still free of charge. Upon successful agent application, Airtel will provide training and customized branding material for your business location, still free of charge. To register, call us today on 1 to 6 toll free. Airtel Money. Simple, secure, borderless. Airtel is regulated by Uganda Communications Commission. It is the day that, of course, we've been waiting for where we'll have the Speaker and the Deputy Speaker elected in the 11th Parliament. We are joined by Honorable Margaret Nantongo Ziwa, and like I earlier told you, she's been at it. And, of course, as we discuss issues of the Speakership and the rest, uh, I'm believing we are joined by another competent person on this issue. Honorable. Wanji. Good morning. Good morning, Sebo Mkuluchirabo. I want to apologize. It has been a wet morning. We thank God for the heavy rains. Um, some of us who are always uh, uh, associated with the hole, this is the right time. But of course, I know and I sympathize with many of the drivers on the roads. Some of the roads have really got blocked with pebbles. And uh, others, when uh, your car is not so strong, the water may overwhelm it. So that's what has happened in many of the areas where we are coming from. But uh, uh, it's brightening up. Let's uh, pray for a, a beautiful day. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, well, uh, Honorable Sebaru, we were still driving home a point of reality mm -hmm. and also uh, when it comes to uh, a moment when a party takes a decision. Please conclude with that. Yeah, uh, I, I was simply saying that at the end of the day, uh, we need to appreciate uh, institutions, organs of the party. We need to appreciate procedures and processes that are undertaken in order to arrive at deployment at different offices within the party so that uh, then we are well coordinated and we appreciate the big picture because when the party captures power when the party is voted into office then the party has a responsibility to deploy at different levels uh, and that is a procedure that is for the best interest of the party in terms of delivering uh, on the manifesto and the mandate at a given point in time. Honorable mm. Nantongo, yes. here we have an issue of precedent being set in the speakership press. Mm. We have already seen the decision of SEC respected and nobody contesting it. Thomas Taewa for deputy speakership did the same, saying for me I'm coming as an independent and Honorable Kadaga, former speaker, says yes, now I'm going to the people and let the mighty uh, or the powers of numbers urging people electorate Please tell your members of parliament to elect Rebecca Kadaga. What does this mean uh, to the party and, of course, multi party dispensation? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, first, I think I should again congratulate uh, the NRM party for taking its responsibility uh, uh, seriously. I feel bad a bit that uh, it has been taken a little bit late. I wish it had been done a little earlier mm -hmm. so that uh, maybe there would have been a little more uh, reorganization among us or maybe people would not have taken longer strides than maybe they have done but they have taken their responsibility they have done their responsibility and uh, i think uh, it's important like uh, honorable sebalu was saying the party has a duty when in 19 uh, in uh, 2005, we opted to go multipartism. Uh, when we opted for the multi-party political dispensation, uh, parties have responsibilities. And part of the responsibilities is to identify their cadres and actually deploy them. Uh, part of uh, uh, the, 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 the speakership is a, a third uh, office within the land, and it's a very important uh, uh, office. Within uh, Uganda, we follow a system whereby the, 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 the party with the majority would actually take the, the speakership. Some countries opt to, to, to give the speakership maybe for the smallest party. I've, I've seen mm. some of those countries who opt for that. But in our, in our case, it is the party with the strongest majority mm. automatically to bring the speaker. Mm. So that on the book... We must now know that uh, when sex sat, it made its recommendation and it recommended that uh, Honorable Jacob Bolanya uh, is, uh, is recommended, uh, is uh, nominated to carry the flag for the NRM for the speakership and equally Honorable Mungin. So because of that, we expect party royalty, we expect uh, 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 accountability, when I say accountability, when many of these members were elected, they were elected as individuals, but more so because of their party. Mm. Uh, I contested and maybe people didn't vote me because of my party. Mm. And uh, for because of that, uh, when you come in, you carry the, the mandate of the people, but also their party. Mm. So because of that, we expect that uh, the members, we pray that they will be able to respect uh, their, their, their party and they show us th that multipartism works. You've talked about, yes, you contested and maybe uh, this is Buganda region where some, somehow your party didn't do very well. Yeah. But let's look at uh, uh, the party, this issue of independence mm -hmm. has been on for a long time. And usually the party seemed not to come out clearly on how the issue of independence should be done. Remember during uh, the campaigns, the issues, please, we are not going to rate independence. But at the end of the day, not much is being done. Is it because at some times maybe it plays with the interest of the party? 
At some point, of course, uh, there is a constitutional, uh, it, there was a constitutional snag mm -hmm. and uh, it went to court. Uh, somebody argued that uh, it's, it's his right and uh, that right must be respected. You can belong to party, but you can also, you have to, you can have an opportunity to belong or not belong. Mm. So because of that, this question of independent has remained on the books. And because of that, you still see independence. But that does not erase the fact that we are under multi-party political dispensation. And multi-party political dispensation demands mm. that people behave in a political party arrangement. And this is an NRM government now, whereby a government, independents are not expected to take government. So because of that, we expect that NRM is going to take the office, is in office, and it must place its cadres who will drive the NRM agenda. Because when you are in uh, an independent, which agenda are you going to, 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 to promote? Uh, one may, may argue that maybe people's agenda, what is the people's agenda? The, the NRM is promoting the people's agenda, mm. and everybody is promoting the people's agenda. So because of that, the party which is uh, elected in office, the party which is uh, in power, mm. should be supported all the way, mm. particularly with these very mm. critical offices, mm. which should be the ones to drive mm. uh, uh, the, 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 the government, mm. to help the government in place to implement its manifesto. Honorable Sebalo, are there people within uh, the party NRM that are more or bigger than the party. We've seen the party make choices, and actually in the actual voting, the independents that are NRM leaning have finally come out as winners. Yeah, <coughs> definitely under a party, multi-party arrangement or any organization, mm. uh, definitely uh, you don't expect anyone to be bigger than the organization. Uh, that is uh, not something that uh, is uh, constructive. Uh, what we do in organizational management mm. is to subordinate our interests and desires to the interests of the organization. Mm. So ordinarily, uh, the best case scenario would always be that uh, we appreciate the big picture and play along in terms of uh, contributing uh, to the realization of the big picture or an organization. And in that regard, a discipline comes mm -hmm. very core in that. And that's why I gave you the examples I did give you of mm -hmm. President Mukapa, mm -hmm. President Ali Hassan Mwinyi, mm -hmm. who were at one time Minister of Foreign Affairs and is deployed and as an ambassador he goes and eventually both of them ended up being presidents but for now the examples that you've given honorable that for these political parties uh, sorry to interrupt, for these political parties they have set precedents that a person knows going against a party idea has got has got implications heavy implications when you talk about south africa if you remember the mlema who thought they were mightier than the party you get you're expelled from the party if you talk about ccm uh, china communist party you don't mess because there are repercussions if you talk about nrm you you can live without it no i, I think i don't underestimate nrm <laughs> nrm plays one role that may be unique because you have to deal with different situations in different environments NRM is an accommodative party mm -hmm. that it goes ahead and tries to re-engage the members. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, there is a term that is used in NRM, rehabilitate. Mm -hmm. because, because at the end of the day, expulsion alone is not, uh, is not the solution. Uh, there is also constructive engagement and getting people to appreciate the need to belong mm -hmm. and to conform to the party principles and party procedures. Mm. But uh, NRM is also very strong in mm. terms of um, ensuring that uh, people follow and appreciate uh, the discipline. Mm. Well, I know very soon we shall have a break and we will have Honorable Sebao rush for another yet appointment. But before I let you go, Honorable, uh, what are your expectations for today? My, my expectations are such that uh, uh, members of parliament uh, do elect uh, a speaker 
especially those members that belong to NRM, should complete the exercise that was started. The exercise was started as per the constitution of the party, uh, getting a flag bearer whom all members of the party ought to support. So my expectation is that at the end of the day, the NRM candidate will carry the day. That is my expectation. Uh, and uh, it is driven from the fact that members of the NRM party were elected as NRM members of parliament and therefore should be in position to fulfill their obligations as party members and provide a leader of parliament who is an NRM candidate to be able to navigate and manage the affairs of parliament and be able to pass laws and be able to pass budgets and be able to implement uh, the, the party manifesto the basis of which NRM was given mandate to lead Uganda uh, for the term 2021 uh, 2026. Mm. Well, we'll take a short break. We'll return shortly with Honorable Margaret Nantongo Ziwa. I'll let Honorable Sebal rush for yet another uh, commitment, but we'll return shortly with this discussion. What does it mean to be closer together? It's taking the last bus home for a surprise visit. Closer together is strangers finding a connection. It's bringing home something much more than a box. It's the warmth of home or the beginning of something new. There's magic in sharing the things that we love because it's those things that bring us close together. Well, thank you for keeping it on UBC TV. We are still looking at the speakership race where the elections are going to be held today by members of parliament. Previously, we saw party politics. That is an uh, in-house preparation to have the best uh, for the race. That is NRM SEC yesterday where also uh, there was a bit of voting at the caucus. And finally, we saw for the deputy speakership press. Yes, uh, NRM, it was a hotly contested one because mm -hmm. we had uh, Robina Rakojo who got 10 votes we had uh, that is uh, Thomas Tayewa who actually before declaring the results uh, moved out and said I'm heading to Kampala to meet Honorable Kadaga and I'm coming as an independent he scored 149 votes then uh, we had Anite that is Bukedi a woman member of parliament move, taking that day with 168 votes now she is NRM's choice that is for the position of deputy speaker. But also, this race is still hot now when we move to the speakership. We have Ibrahim Semujunganda, that is FDC. Mm -hmm. DP is bringing a first entry into parliament, that is uh, Ronald Sebalamu, to come and take over uh, the speakership. And also have Rebecca Kadaga, an independent of the NRM, and the official candidate for the party, the ruling party, Jacob Olanya. Margaret Ziwa, you've been at this, the speakership. First, let's understand uh, the key roles of the speaker uh, so that we know what is it that is causing this, is it service, is it money, is it ensuring, why do we see also the party so much concerned at such a position? Uh, thank you, Mkuluchirabo. I think uh, at the helm of it is not money, mm. at the helm of it, I shouldn't even say that it is power per se, mm -hmm. but it must be service. Mm. But I want also to emphasize that uh, there are clear designated responsibilities of the speaker among us which is the speaker actually heads the institution or the organ of the of the assembly or the parliament sorry when i say assembly mm, uh, you're uh, so uh, much uh, east uh, african uh, assembly. Sorry about that yes. but uh, parliament is a is 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 a, is a arm of government mm. and uh, it is a, a very important arm of government 
and uh, the head of that arm of government is the speaker. Mm. So he heads that arm of government mm. and he chairs the parliament, mm. meaning he's in charge of parliament. He in, in, is actually strictly, he does not debate, but he guides and he gives direction. And uh, he, he's, he, he helps the members to come up with the resolutions, recommendations, uh, and to, to pass laws, because that's one of the cardinal roles mm -hmm. of parliament. In addition, he actually also oversees the parliamentary commission, and he chairs it, meaning that uh, that parliamentary commission looks at the management and administration of parliament. And that's purely administrative, but it's also very cardinal because it looks at the welfare of members of parliament and the general running of, of, of parliament. Because if it's not in, 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 in control or in tandem with the other um, uh, arms of government, then it becomes maybe an isolation, it, it becomes isolated or it, it, is, it becomes an eyesore. Uh, because it has also to balance within maybe in terms of budgeting, in terms of resources among us others and activities. So it, that's one other very important. But also she takes the responsibility or he takes the responsibility to know deeper the, the, the growth of parliament. Because um, uh, as you know, uh, every institution has to grow. Uh, it, uh, parliament has been growing in numbers, I think, since... Uh, since uh, since 2007, mm. we've come from 2,209 members of mm. parliament to 238 to um, 316, mm. then to 425, mm. now to 529. Uh, 29. So that growth in the numbers mm -hmm. re uh, requires or demands mm. Uh, uh, commensurate uh, 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 facilities. So that growth must be planned for. Resources must be resourced and must be put in place. And also, uh, which, which also must, uh, must rhyme with the other needs. Mm. Uh, it's not just the physical features, but it's also the capacity. If you look at the composition now, many members are new, are first time, there, mu they must, there must be a, a comprehensive capacity building mm. program mm. to enable them to come to speed with what a member of parliament, what is required of a member of mm. parliament, and what is required for him or her mm. to perform. Uh, that may include many other facilities and amenities, including the IT, uh, computers among us others, including research assistants, including office space among us others. So the speaker has to facilitate or to guide uh, both the commission and the clerk to be able to make sure that all those are in line to helping a member of parliament mm. to uh, do his job. Mm. Let's look at uh, the speaker, he or she, mm. whoever turns out to take that day. Mm. Uh, how does she or she execute his duties or her duties in an independent way? One of the issues that have been raised has been Yes, your party uh, leaning, but will not see this in execution of your work. And this maybe to many looks like, okay, let's have a person who is going to be uh, ensuring that opposition does not cherish that much, but also that NRM does. We do not have all overshadows one sex side and leaves the other. You've been there before. So how, how does this, how do you create this balance because of course we know there's a preoccupation that sent you to power of course uh, there is it's you expect it to be impartial mm -hmm. uh, meaning you shouldn't maybe incline on one side or another but that is before we or, or because we know that each one of us should be working for a common good mm -hmm. and the common good mm -hmm. I, I, I is common to all so in, in that respect, then, there shouldn't be, oh, this is for, for, for this party or for this party. Because the common good is for all of us Ugandans. And because of that, then the speaker would be able to act within that uh, uh, medium of, 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 of impartiality. But of course you find that at times one program may be preferred by a, a, a certain party to another. 
And that's where, for instance, the speaker would have to exercise his, his or her, 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 her judicial um, uh, uh, decisions to say, I think it's important that considering this kind of situation, we need to prioritize this agenda other than that or maybe have the other ones suspended or deferred to another uh, timing so that we are able to, to to strike a balance but i think the whole idea is all governments work for a common good the good of the people and because of that we envisage that the speaker would actually foster that position and because he's fostering f that position the opposition the, the 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 government the the power in the party in in government will all converge on certain aspects of course you you do you do you do look at it in the in the in the true context of 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 the nrm now to say now as we come th from this election how or why or how should the 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 the, the priorities be vis-a-vis, uh, -vis, for instance, the needs of the members of parliament, vis-a-vis -vis the parliament itself. But it's known for sure that uh, each organ gets its own budget. Now, the speaker will be re responsible for saying, how do we rationalize the resources we have? What should come first? Some people would view that, for instance, looking at members' welfare, Mm. including their transport, mm -hmm. including, for instance, uh, some of the amenities they do get should not be the first priority. Mm. But another one would argue and say, if I am not uh, facilitated, for instance, to get mm. transport, how will I come from either Kabera Maido mm. to come to Parliament and vice versa? Mm. So when we talk about those issues, at times they come to the fore when the discussions begin. Mm. In the next, after the speakership, uh, election, you find that they will go into looking at, for instance, the, 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 the rules of procedure mm. will come very, very key. How are we going to manage ourselves? That's the basically what is in the rules of procedure. How are we going to manage ourselves as a parliament? In most cases, there are those standard procedures which have been there since time in memory. Those people were mm. in the first parliament, second parliament, they had to do those mm. respective, uh, or maybe the decorum maybe the way how they address the chair, among us others, those will be carried. But there are a few certain things which may sort of like change. So Parliament may have to look at that. In there, there are other uh, si silent, silent areas. For instance, uh, the immunity of members. That is in implied, even from the Constitution, as you execute your duty. Mm. But you find that in most cases, you may need to actually delink it where is your immunity? To what level? Does it only remain in the chamber? Does it go in the press seats of parliament? Does it go outside? Among us others. When they call you honorable, what does that entail? Con conduct and yes. What does that entail? How should you behave yourself? So all those will go into the training. Then these other f amenities which I've talked about, like transport, like uh, medical, like what, all those will come into play. But of course, to the voter out there, you will say, the first thing they have gone to handle would be their transport. Mm. But in reality, in relation to the way how the, the business of the house would move, that is important. Because if you want to have a quorum, if you have to have your members all in one place, then you must make sure that you facilitate them to be in the place at the right time. <laughs> However, we've had many being given these priorities and uh, the 10th <laughs> Parliament challenge has been absentism with all these <laughs> <laughs> amenities, uh, whatever provided still, uh, high levels of absentism have dominated the 10th Parliament. Uh, Honorable Margaret Ziwa. Yes. Sir. Yes, uh, we know we are in a multi-party dispensation. Mm. Today we have a Semu Junganda, who is mm. for FDC. Mm. Uh, we'll be having a DP. I don't know if Sema would be able to pull so much on that. Mm. Then you have Olanya, mm. NRM. Of mm. course, NRM will already the number, I think 336 will be good to go. Mm. But of course, now this could have divided. Mm. Uh, mm. The Kadaga team, then mm. also we shall have this. Mm. Uh, let me... Uh, what are your expectations, given this time around, that we're having a vote where there is an independent? How do you see today come to an end? 
I expect uh, Jacob Bolanya, mm. the NRM candidate, to win. Mm -hmm. uh, party royalty mm. is, uh, is not assumed, but it's demanded. It's party royalty mm -hmm. is demanded. When I say demanded, mm. if you say I'm an NRM, mm. you are expected and you are demanded mm. to follow suit. When I say that, I mean it because that's the option we, all, we, we opted to take when we said we are going multi-party political dispensation at the time. And because of that, you would not, or the consequences would be dire mm. if you don't follow suit. And we've seen it. I don't want to quote, but we, we, we saw a president uh, uh, at one time during presidential elections where a strong candidate felt that he's, he wants to take it alone mm. and wants to go independent and he went and uh, formed. But when the results came, we saw what happened. Mm. I, I don't want to, 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 mm. to, 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 to mention, mm. but that tells you that, uh, you know, uh, the, the, there is a Luganda saying, Yaukana kum gendo. Yafuka kasa. Yafuka kasa. Exactly. Mm. When you when you when you move away from mm. from the from mm. the from the the the, the, the flow, mm. you are bound to have challenges, or you are bound to to, to become a reject, whatever uh, whatever way mm. you may interpret it. Mm. So that's why I say that uh, party royalty is demanded. Mm -hmm. Uh, our party may not be earlier on I had uh, I, 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 you, you sort of like put it to Honorable Sevalu. Mm. Our party may be not uh, may not be as reprimandive mm. as maybe some of those other parties you may have quoted. Mm. But still there are many other uh, 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 situations where you, mm. you will feel the pinch because you have not conformed. Mm. And uh, there are many other uh, I don't want to call them benefits, mm. but uh, many other other opportunities which are available or uh, which will be availed mm. to you if you conform. Mm. So because of that, mm. I expect uh, uh, I expect uh, when uh, members of NRM go to, to 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 the house when they go to Kololo, mm. where house will be uh, the house will be convened, they will elect Jacob Olanya, mm. they will elect uh, uh, Mongi. Mm as uh, as the as the deputy speaker and uh, we will be set mm. to have uh, the, the, the 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 government uh now mm. kick and, and running because this is the now the arm mm. which has not yet been uh, concluded on mm. to, to have the government mm. uh set well i want to thank you so much honorable margaret nantongo ziwa one key word i've noted there is party royalty is demanded yeah <laughs> party right is demanded oh. so let's wait the D-Day is today and uh, the voting will be kicking off that is at Koro and of course we'll be giving you these live updates on our various social media platforms we want to thank you so much for having been part of this show I'll now leave you with Ruben to take you through the sports updates good morning and please keep it on UBC TV With Airtel Money Today, agent application and registration is free of charge. All you need to submit as a sole proprietor business is a letter from the business owner requesting for a SIM card and the purpose of the SIM card.